This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. This episode of PTG is brought to you by HK Army. HK is an industry leader in high-quality paintball gear, accessories, and lifestyle apparel that was founded in 2007. And we have a tremendous opportunity for you all to be geared up on every level with HK Army Custom Team Gear. Whether you're on the paintball field or in the airsoft arena, take your game to the next level by using code PTG to get 50% off your custom gear design fee. And I don't think y'all heard me out there. That is 50% off and you will be able to collaborate with a seasoned designer to create custom branded HK Army jerseys, long sleeves, t-shirts, pants, gloves, or headbands for your team with no minimum order quantity. Head on over to hkarmy.com slash custom and use code PTG for 50% off on your team's custom gear design fee right now. Let's go. Thank you, HK Army, for everything you do in paintball, in airsoft, and in so many people's lives. We love you. Go check them out. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by the one and only Trans Labs that brought the world two amazing products. First off, Transfuse, which is a hydration multiplier. And most recently, they just dropped Transcend, which is a nootropic energy formula. No matter what you use, when you choose Trans Labs, you are going to be boosted and you are going to be ready to charge the paintball field and win out there. With Transfuse, that is a premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula scientifically designed to replenish you at the cellular level. And they use all natural ingredients in this product. We've got zinc, we've got vitamin B6, we've got vitamin C, sodium, potassium, choline, and it is an amazing way to make sure that you're hydrated and prepared to play top level paintball. When it comes to Transcend, that is a premium nootropic energy formula designed to increase cognitive performance, elevate mood and clarity while supporting long-term brain health, and it's going to leave you feeling great with no crash or jitters. It's one of the only products in the nootropic space backed by research studies to ensure the formula is correct for optimal performance. It is more potent than anything on the market, and it will keep you charged and ready to win out there. I take one scoop, but if you're stimulant sensitive, take a half scoop. And if you want that LFG dose to launch to the moon, dump two scoops in your drink and you are going to be flying down that paintball field. Comes in two delicious flavors, Baja Blast and Skittles Candy for the Transcend. And for the Transfuse, they have two new flavors as well, Pineapple Express and Hawaiian Punched. So if you get a chance, head over to translabs.com. That's T R A N Z. Labs.com. Use code play the game and you'll get 10% off. If you subscribe to a monthly delivery service, you also get 10% off as well. So you could take advantage of 20% off on these products. Head over to translabs.com and give it a go. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This episode is a total banger. We've got the man, the myth, the legend, Spartacus, Maximus, the gladiator. The one-on-one champion, Jacob Edwards, tunes in with us at about like the, if you guys want to fast forward, it's at about the 30-minute mark. Uh, But I don't think you guys want to miss the first half of the show. Tyler and I break down the whole event, how things went for Houston Heat and San Diego Dynasty. And then we have Jacob call in, and he talks about his one-on-one experience, what makes him so great, what makes the team so great, how damage has climbed their way back to the top, and all of the golden nuggets that you absolutely do not want to miss. So thank you guys so much for rocking with us. And without further ado, we'll see you in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts 
Channing Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. He came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. All right, PTG Nation, we're back from we back. Philly NXL. And obviously, as everybody knows, it was an amazing tournament. The venue that the NXL held for the Philly NXL was top-notch. The grass was premium. The play was outstanding. Grass and was there was some crazy paintball being played, as we all know, from watching the Go Sports broadcast. Yeah, Ty, I mean, absolutely. You mentioned the uh, the playing surface the, the Philly venue might be the best one of the season. That grass is absolutely insane. It's like sliding on a pillow. You I just know. glide around there. <laughs> I mean, if you want to criticize, which, you know, I'm always down to, to, you know, talk about what could be done better. Maybe it could be a little more level, but my goodness, it's near perfect. It's yeah. near perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. butter out there. Totally, it's, totally. It's the most elite surface. And yeah. then the, uh, I think the orientation of the sun setting on the field and rising was pretty good. That's always something you want to be mindful of when you're setting up a field for the players mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and in the evening for the finals game is, you know, that orientation as well. Absolutely. And they're definitely doing everything they can to provide the best surfaces and the best venues that they can for the players out there. Yeah, totally. Um, that's an, that's a good point there, Ty. For uh, anyone listening, if you're maybe a field owner or or a new field owner and you're considering, you know, putting in an air ball field or any kind of field, make sure that the sun uh, sets from side to side. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah, you know, you don't People want the sun to be setting or rising in the morning to where when you start on one end, the sun is rising or setting on the other side of the field. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you want it to be going, I guess, east west. Because it, it's truly a disadvantage if you have that sun blaring into your eyes, unless you have like a good tented lens to to block it. But if you have a clear lens, you are smoked. Oh, you're toast. Yeah, yeah. literally toast. Yeah. So <laughs> set the field north, uh, north, south, let the sun rise, you know, east, west as it does, and you'll be yep. just fine. <laughs> yeah. And then and then you definitely have to play the shadows when it when the field is set up properly and the sun is going over the field and it's not in your eyes, then it Certainly. starts to turn into shadow ball. So you got to be mindful Certainly. of that. Yeah, hundred percent, Ty. Well, damn, dude, we're both losers. This is the first yeah, show in a while. No you know, we, we get on here and uh, damn, bummer, fudge. Bro. I actually thought like, yeah. you know, you guys were looking like you were firing Primed. on all cylinders. I felt like we were just kind of clawing our way through matches. Um, you know, we we had a pretty easy prelim bracket, which uh, I, I don't love that. You know, you don't really get tested. Damage was really our our tough match. Um, we got tested in that we went down three, one, we had to claw back. So we did have a little bit of a test, but you're not truly ready for Sunday. If you don't have, you know, tough brackets, I would rather play the top four teams in the prelims. You know, mm -hmm. to me, that would be ideal. Um, yeah. I personally play better when it's against better teams and it's no knock to the, to the teams that are, you know, in the bottom 10 of, of the league right now, ranking wise, it's no knock to them. I mean, they'll get there eventually. It just takes a lot of time. It's a lot of experience. You know, the, the teams and players that are in the, top 10 uh especially the top six have been playing for 20 years or more like that's the reality of it you know there's just a tremendous amount of experience on these on these really good teams so it's a different level of paintball that gets played um and you can kind of get you know lured into things that you think are going to work that don't work um so uh you know for us i i felt like you know we went to the damage match went down three one there wasn't much time left we were able to come back and and win by one point uh then impact same thing sunday morning we went down four one uh, with three and a half minutes to go and somehow that one was crazy i mean that was crazy that was insane yeah. you know i'm mm -hmm. sitting there's four one three and a half minutes and i'm like it's just not statistically possible for us to do this again <laughs> you know and boom. uh and boom but the team did you know i mean the team like it's crazy when we're in those situations in the pits it it, it is a interesting thing that everybody has no real worry it's like we truly believe that we're gonna win it's we, like we're already planning for the next game almost you know whether that's arrogant or or uh naive i don't know well, but no, it's like you have truly to, dude you have yeah. to see it you know you have to see it totally. and believe it and hold it and then totally. you can accomplish it yeah absolutely and then individuals have to step up and do it right like archie yeah. had a massive point chris Shear had a no. massive point against damage both of them on each tape you know had really big moments in that impact comeback um Chris, especially in the overtime point. Um, but it's, uh, you know, still it, you're, you're like barely hanging on when you're winning games like that. Right. You know, at some point something has to give, you know, looking back at, at our, our run, 
I've I said I've said this on many shows. I've said this to you in private. I've said this to, to my teammates. I'm like, dude, I feel like <laughs> we could easily not made Sunday that event, you know, and we ended up winning. And we like you could argue that one point a different direction in the prelims, we don't even make Sunday. Um, and this was the event that it gave, you know, it just was. Um, we we were not the better team against X Factor, you know. I uh I, I think uh, we were still trying to figure things out. Um, you know, we had a lot of different things go wrong. Um, you know, I think we were a little distracted, to be honest, uh, which is, you know, is what it is. We have to be better and be, be more focused. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great lesson, actually. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it's a, it, it was a good wake-up call. It's nice to, to have those moments, those realizations that you're not uh, unbeatable. By any means, you know, teams that are hungry. I mean, X Factor, like I went back and watched the games. I got home at midnight last night, um, landed in San Diego around midnight, came home. It was like probably one in the morning. You know, uh, Sahar picked me up. We got some food. We got, went to in and out by the way. Shout out to all the listeners that messaged me saying they're from Whataburger country and in and out <laughs> is better. I appreciate you guys because, yes, it sure damn is. Uh, we got some in and out came back, and I was just watching film. I, I went back and watched that X Factor match. And seeing the way they celebrated the semifinal win over us was like, whoa, they, they're celebrating more than we've celebrated winning the finals the last couple of events. You know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. the reality. Like when you're in that position, people want to beat you so bad that if you don't want to beat them so bad, it doesn't matter if you can be better than them. They're going to be better than you because they simply want it more. You know, they simply want it more. And X Factor played just so gritty with so much fucking heart, so much, mm. uh, you know, like they they just kept punching. They kept punching. You could tell in their in their movements, their body language, they're in their pit, the intensity. I mean, their intensity was was really at all time high. I mean, uh, you know, they they played us with everything they had. And, and, you know, that's why they got the win. And, you know, just as good as anybody, you have to will it to be. You mm -hmm. have to will wins to be and. Yep. You know, this is something that you talk about religiously is the preparation on and off the field and really being consumed by the fabric, you know, that we're working with, which is paintball, which we all strive to be the best at. And uh, X Factor has definitely been working really hard. And I think in that overtime or not the overtime point, but that last point, Ryan Greenspan was screaming something from the corner. What was going on in that very last point? Yeah. So that was overtime. That was. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And dude, I mean, it's just so unfortunate, right? Like over time, we get the exact situation we want. Um, I, I shoot Billy off the like, break. Like, Oliver, you screwed me. <laughs> so I'm just joking. Oliver but, uh, didn't fill fill the air tank. But I mean, look, I, I said this in the group chat, you know, because uh, Oliver apologized. Ryan, I, you know, he had a gun issue the point before that. So Oliver gave him his gun, I think. And it didn't have air in it. So we started the overtime point. And this is frustrating to me because, you know, Blake was was my guy. Blake and I played the same position a lot of the event. And then come Sunday, you know, Skinny decided to narrow it down. And and uh, I ended up getting the call over Blake in that spot. You know, I thought Blake was playing amazing. It could have been either one of us. It's just on Sunday, you, you kind of have to choose one to, to catch rhythm, right? And say, yep. you're going to play multiple points. And that's how you get good at, you know, shooting people off the break, reading tendencies within a match. It's really important to, to have that. Um, and you know, skinny ended up going with me. And so Blake was my guy. Like I was talking to him about what was going on in between every single point where they went, where I needed to shoot all the good stuff. And then he was also, he would grab my gun and fill it up with air, but he would come back. And every single time he'd hand, this goes, not just Blake, anybody, when you hand me my gun back, first thing I do is I look at the gauge and if it starts to creep down, I top it off before I go back out on that field. Like it's, it, that's my that's responsibility. It's kind of like a tick almost that it I is. have where yes. I go and I, yes. I like go to the it air is. and yeah. Well, for you, for sure on the back dog yeah <laughs> wait what did you say i'm Sharp sorry shooter. oh no i said you for sure you only got four pods on the back so it's definitely just no a way. tick you, i'm no, i'm running I i'm running I'm, eight these days baby i'm running eight I'm just playing. I'm hammering I'm just playing. the paint you Let's don't go. need eight though you shoot everybody in one or two <laughs> um but uh anyway like to me that's just part of my thing like i'm not going to go on the field without checking that you know um oliver gave ryan his gun didn't have air in it so we start the overtime point we even used a timeout so we had plenty of time you know like we got our game plan we were we were dialed in and and um i don't know ryan i guess he, he didn't check it oliver didn't check it uh we break out and uh like 30 seconds into the point um you know first we get the kill off the break it's 54 we have an advantage we feel good we get into the snake we get another kill feels good and then you know we lose uh mikey then we lose archie it's a three on three now still in great position. Ryan's mm -hmm. out, uh, 
actually he's in the back center at that point. And he, he says our code that means his guns down. And I'm like, okay, well get that shit up. Like literally I said, fix it. You know, we're good right now. <laughs> fix it. It's, you know, and I, I said the code and he was saying the code of, uh, nobody was past the back center on the snake side. So we had a massive, you know, field advantage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he's like, no, 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 I don't have air. And I was like, Oh no. Okay. So we're mm. playing a two on three now. And Ryan's the only one over on the snake side. So, you know, meter's going to be able to fill out. Uh, it was, you know, kind of put a whole wrench in the whole thing. So dude, what if you had a code like hot swap, hot swap, boom, you run this way. I run that way. And you just swap, you know, bro, Ty, I'm not even kidding. I, I actually, in, in watching that match, I realized I should have probably filled across and got into the snake rather than Ryan asked me to go to the wedge to look mm. inside and keep meter from filling out of the back center. But the issue was as soon as I made the move to go inside, meter was already wrapping the back center. Yeah. So he saw me. And as mm -hmm. soon as he saw me, he filled into the can on the snake side and then I couldn't do anything. Now I'm at a huge disadvantage of where I'm gunfighting from. He could easily put me in and make that move. And actually in him trying to put me in, he shot me, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to gunfight on the inside of that wedge that angles down in a super awkward way against the stand-up can who's getting no pressure from Ryan in the corner because he doesn't have air. Uh, it was uh, it was frustrating. And Definitely there is the a move. science. There's a science to the bunkers too. Like you Absolutely, said, those wedges. Yes. If, you're, if you're in a wedge and you're fighting a can, statistically, you are at a little bit of a disadvantage just because of the way the bunker is angled and the shape of that bunker. Absolutely, dude. And yeah. that's why, you know, Rusty Glaze did a great class on on BKI. Uh, so did Nick Laval, actually. Yeah, that's right. On, on the best bunkers to play behind and he talks about the different angles and when you're done fighting, how it's, you know, difficult to, you know, expose yourself from certain spots. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, you know, again, we're in the overtime point. We have a huge advantage and this kind of happens and, and threw a wrench in our gears. And to be clear, I'm not, I'm not making excuses to me. That's, that's, that's our own fault, period. There's no one else to blame for stuff like that than yourself. And who knows, even if Ryan had air, maybe we still lose that point. You know, X Factor again was playing incredibly gritty. They were down a body off the break. They find a way to even it up. It's a three on three. Who knows if we win that one? You know, uh, I, I don't know, um, but I know we have a better chance at least, you know, and then we move Definitely. on and, and play damage in the finals. We had a gritty, tough match against them in the prelims. Who knows if we win that one, too? I, I don't know, but um, definitely a bummer to have it go down like that. It's a massive lesson at how important discipline and um, uh, focus and attention to detail is. You know, you have to be in these high pressure moments and this is where teams make all the mistakes divisional teams pro teams all, all the teams that aren't winning they make their mistakes on sunday when the pressure starts to build and you're in the pit and you're kind of chaotic and you forget the little things you forget that you're supposed mm -hmm. to go to this spot and look right instead you look left you forget that if you shoot the wide body you're supposed to fill up to the middle and cut that off you forget to fill your air you forget uh that you had a broken ball in your left pod you know, all these little, little details that really add up to wins and losses, right? Absolutely. It, it, it's just such an important lesson that nobody is, is above those kind of mistakes and errors, you know? And if you want the best chance at winning, you have to really pay attention to every single detail and you have to treat it like it's do or die. Because if you don't do every little thing and the other team does every little thing, if you're a little bit more talented than them, they're going to beat you because they did a few mm -hmm. more things than you. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it's it's a way to punch above your weight, first of all, because a lot of teams won't yeah. do those little things. So if you yeah. maybe don't have the talent, you can you can elevate yourself. This is how we find success with the divisional teams that I coach. We just do all the little things better than the other teams. And it's really easy to, to start putting championships together. Right. Yeah. And at the pro level, it's especially that, you know, you have mm -hmm. to do those things. Um, it's just so crucial. So, again, a, a super valuable lesson. Um Really bummed. I uh, I had, you know, obviously a different ending in mind. 33rd birthday on Sunday. I know. Father's, Happy birthday, Father's brother. I you, know. Papa. I appreciate it. You know, it was Father's yeah. Day. I, I was wearing his necklace the whole day. And and uh, I just, um, man, I, you know, felt it when I woke up Sunday. I was like, we're getting the win today. I just, you know, there was everything that I wanted. I've, I've, I've had that day circled uh, pretty much all season. Um, mm -hmm. And it didn't end the way I wanted it to. But, you know, what's interesting is truly it. it turned out to maybe be much more valuable or worth its weight in gold as far as the lesson that it brought. So to me, it's actually an amazing start to 33. It's my 33rd year. Yeah, man. You're you know? old now. 33. Old, bro. Ouch. No, I'm just joking. Ouch. <laughs> it hurts sitting in this you're chair a, talking. You're a young, dude. Young buck. <laughs> Still got a lot of gas in the tank, man. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially with your work ethic, you know, 
Um, that's really what it comes down to is, is yeah. how much pressure you're applying to the game and yeah. cognitive as well, right? Being smart, working hard and working really smart to accomplish your goals. Um, very cerebral on and off the field and a work ethic that's, you know, up there with the best of them. And I mean, you name them, you're, you're working just as hard as anybody, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Houston Heat, you know, we came up short as well and we lost to Damage in the quarters and Damage was playing a, a different style than anybody else was at that event. And, um, you know, unfortunately, they were able to take us down uh, and it was two to three in the final moments there. We pushed back a little bit at the end, but it was just too little too late. And we needed one of those points to go our way that we lost um, in the early portions of that game. And we really had to claw, man, tooth and nail to to get to where we got to. And, you know, you're talking about grit and uh, and perseverance we had to really push through a lot of um, different hurdles that we were working through. We, you know, going two and two and yeah. going in as the wild card, having to play that extra game in the morning. We played uh, Austin Notorious again, and shout Ooh, out to them. Quick, shout out to them, dude. They had an amazing yeah, event. They they, did. Uh, they impressed, man. They they took down some heavy hitters. Um, yeah. They looked really good with with Harris on the team. Shout out to Harris as well. You know, he he yep. actually he, in my opinion, played very well for them. He was a good quarterback. Yeah. There was a funny moment. Sorry to interject. No, Just one good. funny moment. I was in there in their pit watching their game against. I think it was against level. Or maybe level was just also playing. Yeah, I don't remember who they were playing. I don't think it was against level. I think level was also in their pit. But anyway, uh, Marky Franz, or maybe it wasn't even Franz. One of their teammates was in the snake and, and Harris was in the back center <laughs> and he looks over and the other team was in the 50 snake in that outside brick. And he's yelling at his guy to just watch the San Antonio, which is that 50 brick for them. He's like, watch the San Antonio. And then the guy would like look and say, hey, hey, settle down. Watch the fuck. You know, <laughs> please, yeah, yeah. <laughs> San Antonio. Do you understand me? You know, <laughs> it was just funny in his like New York accent, the way he said it. You understand me? <laughs> yeah. It was great, dude. Come on. But he get was it through like, your head. Yeah, he, yeah, get it through your head, kid. Watch the San Antonio. You understand me? <laughs> it was great, you know. I, but yeah. he was right. He was 100% right on like making sure that zone was watched and discipline was being had. And yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, super proud of them. Yeah. Uh, this is their first year pro and they're making a statement. Me and Harris yeah. were talking mad shit to each other before that game. <laughs> and it was getting fun and and you know that's sports we're having fun um you know it doesn't matter what sport you play if you're in the nfl hockey pro basketball ufc you're talking smack you're trying to totally. it's you know it's head it games too it yeah. and that that's just sports and competitive nature at the highest level um yeah. so thankfully we were able to come out on top in that game um we played ac diesel after that and uh had a good match my bat was hot off the break in that game. I was, I think, getting one every single point off the break, um, whether it was through that first cut on the snake side or shooting the snake runner, and then also picking up the filler. I picked up the filler quite a few times, and so did the squad. We were just eating them up, you know, yeah, on those yeah, secondaries yeah. and those initial portions. And anytime that you can get ahead in the game, as you know, uh, PTG, play the game. You got to play the situations, gotta play, it. Pl play the clock, all these different aspects of paintball that we talk about. And you're able to still punch and move and be aggressive on all of these NXL fields and, and any layout you play. You want to still move if you're up, but you don't have to press quite as hard as if you're down, right? You have that luxury of being able to really connect and, and build a good picture together with your teammates and kind of, you know, lock up the field as best as you can and protect each other and hope that when you guys trade out and stuff starts going crazy, you end out on top with good communication and awareness of what's going on on the field. So thankfully, you know, we came out okay on that one. And then uh, we met damage and they hit us with a unique style that really worked out well for them throughout the entirety of the tournament. And they crossed it up from the back, like nobody else on this field, you know, and they still would press when they needed to and PTG do the necessary moves when they needed to. Uh, but it was really uh, a very, unique style that we saw from tampa bay and they carried that into that finals match that was absolutely bonkers with x factor mm -hmm. you know and uh, i was able to commentate that one up uh for that pro finals there and it was yeah. a crazy one to commentate ty you actually did an amazing job i meant to tell you that thank you for bringing it up I, I was in the airport i changed my flight as soon as we lost i got on the phone with delta and was like 
I need uh, I need to get on a flight tonight. <laughs> I was supposed to leave Monday morning. The last thing I wanted to do was stay and celebrate. And I feel a little bad about it now. It would have been nice to to hang with the team a little bit. But I just wanted to get out of there. I was I was really kind of feeling defeated and mm. uh, knew I had a lot going on this week. Again, we're, we're uh, leaving town tomorrow morning. And so just wanted yeah, to get yeah. home. Right. But anyway, I'm in the airport and I'm watching and I was listening. I'm like, man, you broke a lot of things down in a, in a really high level way and did a fantastic job up there. Um, Thanks, so bro. really, really, really nice. You made watching fun. the finals enjoyable. Yeah, totally. And we had action, dude. We had action dude. the whole time. Oh, we boy. had action. <laughs> um, and amazingly, we're going to have Jacob Edwards here in about eight minutes. We're going to call him the Let's uh, go. pro finals MVP for his one on one takedown again. I want to talk a little Epic. bit about that. We're going to talk with about him. But um, well, we'll I'll wait to talk about the one on one until he gets on the show. But uh, yeah, I thought it was an interesting strategy. You know how they put out Tom Guest. Tom is dope. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was wondering if the strategy was to kind of milk the time and, you mm. know, get Jacob off the field mm. and then put in maybe TJ Danner. Cause I think everybody would objectively agree. TJ Danner is probably their best one-on-one -on -one player on that team. That's you who know, I so thought was going to go out. That's who this. everybody thought was going to go out. So, yeah. you know, they put Tom guest out who is also an amazing gunfighter. Don't get me wrong. Tom he's is an animal. Really, he's an yeah. animal. Yeah. yeah. But TJ Danner has, proven himself over and over and over in yeah. the pro league in one-on-ones and one-on-twos. So I thought it would be TJ. So I'm wondering if like maybe the strategy was for, you know, Hey, look, you go out, let's get Jacob off the field. You know, damage is sending Jacob out first, but what Jacob did so well was he just attacked. So there was, yeah. you know, Tom couldn't just hide. He had to engage. Otherwise he mm -hmm. was going to lose Jacob. <laughs> and so that's why I actually thought it was pretty masterful by Jacob. He, he had a ton of confidence and really exerted his will on, yeah. uh, on tom in that but the kid is an absolute dog the he's, a dog, is a dude. dog he's a dog he's a dog he overshot the shit out of my boy chris here <laughs> so i gotta have some words with him about that because that wasn't oh, too damn. cool but i mean he overshot the shit out of him you know he's playing for keeps dude <laughs> he's playing for keeps dude um but yeah. he's a dog dude he's good jacob is, is really good always has been always has he, been you can't doubt that yeah. no absolutely yeah. and uh just to kind of break down exactly how everything went obviously for the pro x ball everybody knows tampa bay damage one um we had the semi pro x ball paintball fit coming through with that third w Dude, of the season crazy. they're unstoppable right now against a crazy. blast camp again so three finals the same damn yep that's Eesh. a big story there but what's crazy about that is like say it happens again and fit wins again against blast camp in chicago i think mm -hmm. if they get to world cup and, and blast camp wins against fit in the finals at world cup because of the double points i think blast camp would probably get the spot there's no shot bro that that's that's a faulty system then because if that's the way it works i think that you can't win four in a row and then not you deserve that you know what i mean yeah, in my so, eyes I don't so know. you get I, I agree with you so you get 100 points for first place in semi-pro 96 for second so yeah, I mean, like a hundred percent, whoever wins World Cup is is going to be. The but then again, in the same breath, you also have to think of it. It is the Super Bowl. Yes, you know, it's the. Really, I see both sides tournament. of it. Yeah, it's the biggest tournament of the oh, year. It holds God. the most weight. Talk to me. We got huge news. I got Tom Cole to admit it on air this this weekend. Did I tell you? <laughs> I heard about this. I heard yes. about this, <laughs> dude. They are going back to two weekends of layout release so that yeah. teams can practice for two weekends on the layout because they realized that we over here at PTG were right the whole Blam. time. And you Blam. heard it here first. Don't act like mm -hmm. you didn't hear it here first, people. Yeah, but it'll be next year. At least that's what Tom said on the MLPB interview that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, you know where well, everybody got to official. ask Tom a question. It's official. Yeah, it's Super official. cool that Tom is open to that too. Like everybody, whoever wanted to could come up and on the show, ask Tom a question and he would give an answer. I love Tom Cole. He truly Me is, too. is yeah. uh, one of the best things for the All sport. Time. He gets a bad rap, but it's because people don't know him. They think he's just this figure that is just trying to take everyone's money. That's not the damn case. I know Tom very well. And uh, I would be the first to stand up and say, yeah, I don't agree with what he's doing. You know, I don't agree with the people that are in charge here. I, I don't, uh, you can't buy me. You can't buy my voice. And I know you're the same way. So yeah. if I'm, if I'm saying that I, you know, believe in somebody, it's cause I truly do. And Tom is, I don't, I don't know a better person for the job, at least not right now. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know a better person the for the job. We're vouching. Yeah, 100%. 100%. All right, we so, got, uh, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just going to say a uh, division two X ball was the ag Knights. Let's go ag Knights. Uh, the division. AG Knights, dude, they took they're the ones who knocked out my wrecking crew boys in the quarterfinals. So at least yeah. they won. You know, that's playing something. some good ball. 
Yeah. There we go. Division three is a DBS factory. Mm. Division four, Baltimore Braves. Shout out to the Braves. Amazing (coughs) organization out on the East Coast. And uh, Division five is the Suicide Squad in there. Division three, 5v5 is the Veteran Militia. Shout out to the veterans holding it down and taking that one. Yes. And we got Division four, 5v5 is Sheeb. Shout out to Sheeb one time. And then we got Division 5, 5v5, Strange. That's an OG name. We got Strange, Strange back. Strange is making a comeback. Yeah. They're out there putting putting the paint through the lanes and having some fun. Open 5v5, Spread Eagle Tavern. <laughs> and then okay. you, got the, you got the Youth 5v5, Enemy Kids, Amateur 3v3, XPX, Novice 3v3, Denial, Youth 3v3, AG Kids. Let's go, Let's kids. Let's go, AG Kids. Yeah. Open 7v7, Image, another OG name at the top there. And the Amateur 10 versus 10 is CRBN, Carbon, taking that one. Nice. Amazing work out there, everybody. <laughs> you know, Ty, you mentioned something about shit talking being part of the game. <laughs> I I will never talk shit unless somebody else starts it first. But once somebody starts it, then it's Same. on. And I Same. promise you that I will out shit talk you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I promise you. I don't know if you've listened to the show or been part of any of the GOAT meetings, but it's like we're <laughs> – yeah. It's just, it's part of how I was raised. I, you know, I have two Yo. older brothers that are like, you know, my dad, we're Italian as shit. Like, good luck, you know, <laughs> good luck, period. Like, if, nothing is off limits. Good yeah. luck. Um, if you are not in these goat meetings, you are missing out too, because it goes, it's going up. I mean, it's missing way out. It's, yeah. it's insanity totally. in there. We're totally. having a lot of fun and doing the giveaways, and you got to check it out uh, on our website. Click the orange link on the website and you'll really enjoy it. (laughs) Yeah, you could get a free trial too for the uh, uh, lower tier Mm -hmm. access to the Discord, but the GOAT meetings are elite, truly elite. Yes, they are. (laughs) Um, But, you know, it's just like my older brothers were ruthless. You know, my older, my dad was 80 when he passed a couple years ago. My older brother's in his 60s. The other one is in his late 50s. You know, like they're old school. So again, just, yeah. Part of the part of the culture. It's why I get along so well with the New York Wrecking Crew guys. When I go back there, you know, it's like that's just the way it is. Let's go. So anyway, we were talking about shit talking, but then overshooting is another thing. I will not overshoot anybody unless, unless you, they start yeah, it. For then sure. it's just on, and it reminds me of our game against NRG, dude. That kid, Chewy Lewis Betancourt. I've I've always had a ton of respect for him. I think he's a good player. I think he has a lot of potential, right? So I, mm-hmm. it, it, he's an exciting player to watch. Like the very first point or second point of the match, because it was Mikey's line, him and Mikey trade with each other and tee off. Dude, <laughs> yeah, but Mikey is usually the instigator. I got to say it. I love Mikey, but he's the enforcer. He just, he you know, he, yeah. he's, he's out there for blood. He's hungry. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He really wasn't the, the instigator. Like <laughs> Chewy, like kept shooting him, you know? And I was like, whoa, it's like that. That's crazy. It's only like the second point of the match. I don't understand. You know, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> And so, like, for the rest of the match, it was just a nonstop back-and-forth battle there. But even me, I'm like, okay, every time I see you come off the field, I'm in, like, spots where it's really easy to, to, you know, I'm shooting the snake lane, Mm quote-unquote, you know? (laughs) You're walking back to the pit, which is right through the snake lane. (laughs) See ya. uh, I I don't understand the mindset of of overshooting, especially teams that are probably going to beat you because when you're you're on the better team, oh, man, Mm -hmm. it's just uh, you just don't want to play that game. You really don't want to play that game. It's a, it's an interesting thing, but I like the fire. And I told him afterwards, like it was all love afterwards. I was like, I was like, Chewy, dude, I, you started it. I need you to know you started it. I'm not mad now, but like you started all of that, you know, like, I don't know if anybody watched the game, go back and watch the dynasty versus NRG game. Blake was getting involved. Blake is an animal. Blake is Mm, mm -hmm. a a habitual line crosser when it comes to that (laughs) stuff, you know, love Blake to death, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, That's part of what makes him so damn elite. Um, Panther, and some the of their guys were like, you know, it was, it was wild. Uh, it was it yeah. was a good game. So go back and watch. It was definitely very fiery. Um, but yeah, damn, Chewy, Lewis Betancourt. I, you know, again, I was like, where did this come from? What did we ever do to you, bro? What the? <laughs> I don't. I don't. But understand. what I love, what I love is it's full circle. Like the same thing was with with me and uh, Harris before our game with Notorious. Yeah, the night before, because he found out that he was going to be playing us in the morning, and he's he walks by my truck and he's like. He gave me a little flex. He flexed on me saying some <laughs> words, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, all right, all right, you know, keep that yeah. energy, boy. Keep, keep that energy. And then the next morning, 
he walks by and he's like, remember, remember T. And, <laughs> and then I had some words for him cause I'm in my zone before the game, you know, and I'm like, oh, 100%. Uh-uh, I'm not playing games out here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, and then after, you know, no matter what happens before, during, after the game, him and I go up to each other and we say, you know, it's all love dabs 100%. and, you know, 100%. hugs. And it's, in the nature of competitiveness and sport. Yes. And we don't, like we talk about all the time on here, we don't want to be crossing the line and doing the most. Like, let's keep it in a good energy. And obviously, we want to be hyped. We want to play to win. And we want to have that banter and that fun. But, man, keep it professional at the same time. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you're you're a, a consummate professional uh, in, in that sense, you know, hundred, but in many senses, but specifically in that. All right, we've got uh, we've got our guest. He's ready. Let's go. We got Let's a call. Go. Let's do it. We got a call. PTG World. Here we go. The one on one champ, the gladiator, the MVP in the building. Ring, ring. Yo, ha. yo, Spartacus. <laughs> What's up, Spartacus? Dude? How you doing? Doing good. How are you guys, dude? Pretty good, brother. Pretty good. Uh, Are you yeah. not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? Is this not why you came here? <laughs> I think that's your new name, dude. You're Spartacus. You're the you're the gladiator, dude. Maximus Serralius. Yeah, dude. Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> oh Bro. man, Jacob, dude, you're a champ, man. How does it feel? Feels good, man. Again, yeah. we we take it all the way to the to the grinder. To I don't know grinder. why we do that in the finals, but. But we have to. Well, I, I think because everybody knows that they're just going to send you out there. <laughs> I guess, yeah. You know? Now I'm just going to be like that power hitter in baseball where they're just going to intentionally walk me. I'm just going to be bored out of my mind. Well, that's what, again, uh, we were talking about that. We were talking about that right before you, you called. Mm-hmm. I was saying, and I know I talked to you about this, uh, you know, through text, but I kind of feel like that's what X Factor was trying to do. I, I feel like they sent out Tom – um, who again is, is a fantastic gunfighter. You know, he's proven himself in the league. He's a great player, good gun skills, but you got to probably assume that not assume, but I, I think objectively their best one-on-one player is TJ Danner. Right. So that's, what I, that's who I thought I was going to be. Totally. Playing. So you either him or meter. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with both of those meter has a super dialed shot or so, Colt 45, dude, I could see Colt strolling in there. So look, to me, Cole is is a phenomenal shot. His first ball is amazing. His kills come from like surprising people. I don't think his actual gunfighting skills are are. I mean, they're good. Don't get me wrong. Cole is nasty, but I think there's a different pace. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure. and and TJ is like definitely their guy there. Uh, whereas Tom, I think I feel like yeah, the strategy was to go out there. Let's get Jacob off the field. Just hold him off for two minutes. You know, uh, gunfight. Don't lose it. And we'll get Jacob off, and then we'll send in TJ for their second guy. But what you did that, if that was the play, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe they had a one-on-one tournament last weekend at practice, and and maybe Tom won it, you know, and and that's why they went with him. Totally. Yeah, you never know. But if that was their strategy, the way you played that, and I want to know if it was intentional, you attacked him in a way to where he was forced to engage with you. So he had no choice. He had to give you something to shoot at, and you shot him. Was was that like right. kind of part of your plan when you saw? Because I I saw you on the webcast too, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you looked at the pit and you were signaling with your hands to talk, and I think you were asking them who was coming out, but then you saw that it was him, and you're like, oh, never mind. What what was exactly that? Exactly what I was saying. Yeah, I was saying, Joey, Joey, I can't see who they're sending out. Tell me. Oh, okay. And then when I saw him walk out, I mean, he's like six foot six, yeah. dude. You can't miss him. <laughs> I was like, oh, True. never mind. Totally. Okay. Yeah. So and not only s- that, uh, he went to the snake side. Okay where there's yeah. a bunch of laydowns and like short bunkers and yeah. little temples. And then you went to the Dorito side, you know, which it, in my opinion was the better side to be on in the one V ones on that one. Yeah, for sure. So I'm pretty sure he went to the temple so he could have all three sides to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I went over there knowing I, we played one-on-one tournament on the Dorito side. So I knew, Mm. At first, I went over there because we we all know that bounce shot off of the Dorito, and I knew he stayed at the back center. 
So I was mm-hmm. like, shit, I'm just going to go over here and shoot him with a bounce shot and it real quick. <laughs> and uh, I shot it and he ran away. Like I saw him run towards the uh, snake side, like right as soon as I shot it. I was yeah. like, okay, so now I can, I can get slippery over here. So I just, you know, snuck through real quick. Um, I knew that shot from the, the 40 Dorito or 50 Dorito. You know, there wasn't a true 50. It was kind of like either, mm-hmm, either right. side. But uh, I knew that shot from there. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to hit this shot. And I just set him up for it. I knew he was going to play over the top because of how tall he is. Totally. So I just put yeah. the ball there. <clears throat> Jacob, was it part of your plan at all when he walked out? Uh, did, did you did you consider before the point started that they might try to milk it and, and you were going to have to dig him out? So did you kind of make a decision just, that you were going to attack? I just know and. I know in two minutes I can get a, at least a bunker away from you. And if I'm a bunker away from you, you have to engage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. You know, either that or I'm just going to sneak out and shoot your pack. Yeah. You know, I love it. Yeah. It was high so level paintball, I, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. I knew, I knew I have two minutes, right? So yeah. in two minutes, I can pretty much maneuver my way into as close as I want, you know? Yeah. So, so you prefer to attack in that situation rather than, what Tom's strategy was. And actually I, I considered that cause I thought I was going to play a one-on-one in the X factor match. Skinny told me to get ready. Um, we ended up losing with about 30 seconds on, on the clock in overtime. But yeah, I was like, no, the match. you know, I was like, yeah, go to this Aztec. Uh, you can see everything. Let the person get one bunk. Cause for me, I prefer that too. If you're one bunker away from me, I feel really good about that gunfight. You know what I mean? That's, that's what we do. Absolutely. That's so like fantastic. And I'm not going to get surprised because I can come over the top. I could see everything. So for me, I was like, that's a good spot to be in a one-on-one, especially, you know, right-handed, you're feeling dominant. You can see everything. Um, you know, I, I feel like that was a pretty good spot, but uh, the way that you, well, okay. So to kind of go back in, in you saying that you want to get one bunker away, you could do it two ways, right? Like you could let somebody attack into you or you could be the one attacking into them. You prefer to right, be the one attacking right. into them. Yes. A hundred percent, especially yeah. if I, if I think, you know, in my head, they're going to milk the clock, mm-hmm. they're going to milk the clock. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely mm-hmm. going to attack. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because um, then they're off balance. They're like, Whoa, Whoa. I didn't expect No, stop. Stay back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He yeah. hides for just a second. And I, you know, he gives me an inch and I take a mile. He's going to be like, Oh boy. Yeah. You yeah. Know, now he's kind of at a disadvantage. Yeah. Dude, but shout I, out. I, yeah. I know. I, I knew I, I knew that I could get to that that one Dorito and, and hit that shot. Yeah. So I wasn't planning on going any further than that, especially that that gap between those two Doritos. That Aztec has a massive gap between those two. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Shout out to the DLX gang taking home the the big win That's for the right. DLX fam. And uh, I want you to walk us through that match because it was a crazy one, man. Billy was having points. Keith was having points. Chad was having points. Everybody, you know, your brother, uh, Jason was having points. Everybody was having points. Meter had some big moments. And uh, like walk us through the start of the game and, and obviously how it developed. And, and obviously we know it ended with the one-on-one that you clutched. But take us through that finals match. Well, in the beginning, man, it kind of felt easy. Those first two points, I was like, oh, shit, nothing can go wrong. You know, we were, we were hitting people off of the break. And then just kind of, you know, talking as a team and yeah. closing the points out. I mean, we all know how, how easy paintball can be if you play as a team, mm-hmm. especially if you hit a couple people in the break. Yeah. You know, you play five on three, five on threes. And if you're playing together, just easy. Um, but then, you know, they, they just went on a run. They won three back to back to back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think we had like six minutes left. Um and they really dug in. They were they were hiding very well. Yeah. But, what are you, you know, guys we, saying uh, to yourself? Like when they go three points back to back to back, what's what's the com- like? What's the conversation like in the pit at that moment? In that situation, we were just losing people fast. So what mm-hmm. we were saying is like, hey man, let's let's make our spots. You know, let's uh, let's get you know positions and then attack together and uh, attack alive. You know, let's, absolutely let's get five alive and then we'll talk it out and then uh, just attack together. So that's basically what we did. I mean, I was kind of held up in that 30 Dorito <clears throat> and uh, Keith was in the 50 snake, but together we kind of like pinched meter out of the corner and then pitch pinch Billy out of the Aztec. 
Mm. And then uh, I think the next person we shot was the home. And then I traded with the Dorito. But as all that went down, man, they shot so many of us to where Jason had to win a one-on-one against DJ in the end. That's right. And, you guys uh, both clutched one-on-ones, you and your bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, I believe they were talking about it in the pits if they were going to send him out. And then when we both came in from that, uh, long overtime point, they, they asked me if I was ready. And I was like, shit, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. <laughs> of course. Love you that. can't not be ready, right? Like, especially when your team asks you, it's funny, interesting thing. When I came into the pit from the overtime point, I was honestly pretty exhausted. I don't, I don't know why it felt, uh, you know, it was muggy out there. Yeah, man. I feel like it was pretty damn humid. It was, it was kind of, it, it was, it was a little more rough than some of the, some of the other events and, you know, playing every point coming into the pit. And I was like kind of exhausted. And the second Kevin was like, get ready. I like, it was like, I had all the energy in the world. He's like, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Right. And I'm like, yes, I fucking yep. do. That's that adrenaline <laughs> taking over, man. You, totally. just, you just hit that adrenaline shot. Totally. Hmm. Yeah, I was gassed too. If you can, like, on the webcast, you'll see I'm gulping down water, man. I'm fuck. I was breathing yeah. hard. I was like, oh man, I'm I'm beat. I mean, we played four matches that day, so yeah. We, but I was talk to me about and, like uh, your mindset, your mindset, because I know you said, "Give me a water and four pods. I'm gonna go handle business." You know what I'm saying? What's your mindset? Yeah, they were like? they were all worried about the four pods too. They thought that I was gonna shoot more than four pods. I I literally called it in the pit. I would beat them in one. <laughs> That's <pretty> and, funny. <laughs> And and I didn't even pull it. I beat him with a loader. Hey, real <laughs> quick, Jacob, you guys played the wild card round? Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. We played. Uh, uh, we were playing in the morning. Our was first it? game was. Uh, man, I, who I did thought we you guys play? were the two seed in our bracket. No, they were. They were the second team in a row. Both of the last two tournaments have been won by the wild yeah. card. Team. Oh, we played Revo. That's right. We That's played right. Revo in the morning. Yep. So you played, we played Revo? Revo first thing at eight o'clock. We we okay. we actually played lights out that match, beat them six to nothing. Damn. Um, then we had to play Hurricanes, and then Heat, and then you, and then uh, and then X Factor. Yeah, and shout out to the Hurricanes too, man. Playing some great team paintball out there this Dude, weekend. That that is one hell of a team. Like yeah. they play such good team paintball, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. It is like you you think you have a you think you have a move, and they got a claymore set over there. It's like <laughs> what in the world? Straight up, dude, you're not lying. Wow. Yeah, those guys' communication is is on another level, man. They they play together for sure. You can tell they play together a lot because. One guy gets put in, and he's like, "Hey, man, I need help." That dude is immediately helping, like with the situation you know yeah yeah i i mean their coach as well is fantastic mike bianca has done such a tremendous job and you know you I, you keep hearing at least me i keep hearing from you know different people like oh mike bianca is such a good coach and over the last year i'm like I, what you know what do you mean i don't really know the guy start paying attention yeah. you start listening to the little nuggets he says in the pit he was up commentating a game this weekend you know on go sports or you're listening to him commentate the games and i'm like Oh, I get it. I totally get it now. This dude totally understands. Yeah, his IQ is up there. He gets the game big time. We need to yep. get him on the show. I, yeah. We keep saying it. Just need to reach out, um, get him on the show because yeah, he definitely is a high IQ individual for for paintball. Um, and that's yep. uh, you know, it's hard to come by. Like you know, again, Jacob, before you came on, we were talking about you know the top maybe six teams. All the players have like almost twenty years of experience. You know, it's like. Everyone it's unreal. Is, it's unreal. So it's so hard for these teams that maybe they have more athleticism. Maybe they have better gun skills. I still don't think that because I think gunfighting is actually more of a rhythm and timing thing than accuracy. Accuracy is obviously important, but like the rhythm and timing comes from experience. Um, right. It's just so hard for them to break through this, this barrier, you know, cause it's not like other sports where, uh, you know, if you're 40 and you can't jump quite as high, you're not going to be as good at basketball or you're not going to be as good right, at receiver. Right, right. Like if your mind works better mm-hmm. than the opponent, you're yeah. going to be able to make fantastic <laughs> moves and you're going to win the game. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It's yeah. it's a weird game where like me and Keith were roommates this, this event. We're roommates a lot. We, we stay together yeah. at tournaments and whatnot. But we were talking about it. It's That's like, the boy. And if you think about it, we are – we are almost like the last young dudes to come in and take, you know, spots from veterans, really. 
Mm-hmm. Like besides, I guess, Brandon Cornell. Brandon Cornell came in. He was young too. And he came in and started taking spots from people. But, uh, um, I mean, like as me and Keith, you know, Tyler, you were young too. When you came in, you took spots from veterans, but. And Marchie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We, we were all young to come in, but like me and Keith, we came in after you guys. Right. I yeah, think we yeah. were like the last ones to mm-hmm. really come in and take a veteran spot. Now totally. it's kind of like a, a veteran has to pass the torch almost. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's, that's an it's interesting, weird nowadays. That's an interesting mm-hmm. topic, right, Jacob? Because you you came in towards the end of the era where teams had more more people on the roster, right? We were still playing like bigger matches. Um, let's see. Yeah, race to seven, yeah. really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When when did you turn pro? What year? I forget. Two thousand ten. Ten. Okay. Keith, so. Keith as well. I was in the beginning of two thousand ten. I I came in after Phoenix. My my first. Actually, yeah. I played against you in the finals. What? My first uh, PSP tournament was that muddy Chicago one. Oh, oh damn. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you was played it? for Infinite. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bobby Vilas was on that squad, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Was, was it not race to nine back then? Um, I believe it was race to seven. Okay. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the year before that. Maybe 09 was race to nine. And mm-hmm. then they shortened it to seven. Okay, so actually rosters weren't that much bigger. But the only reason I was saying is I, I know when like me, Mouse, Tyler, uh, you know, turned pro, there was like 15 bodies on the roster. Yeah. We were playing two 25-minute yeah. halves. So it was so much easier for kids to come in and get a chance. And then once Absolutely. you're in the program, if you prove yourself in tournaments, you're going to be able to take a veteran's spot. It's not like yep. that anymore. It's like we're running six, seven guys. And if you can't be one of those guys – or if you can't be close, then there's no point in having you on the team. Exactly. Yeah. 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 In the top 10 teams in the world right now, there is well over a thousand years of experience in paintball, in pro paintball. Like in those (laughs) top 10 teams, there is over a thousand years in paintball experience that has been played, you know, which is mind boggling. If you think about it, I mean, if you, if, if you really think about it, I'm 28 years old and I've been pro for 13 years. That's almost half of my life, dude. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. It's that's crazy. one year off of half of my life. That it, it is absolutely insane. We're, yeah, we're I was about doing the, the math the other day. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> dude, how old are you these days? Tw- 28, 28, 20, 28. Yeah. yeah, bro. So Just yeah, that's 28 June 6th. Oh man. Oh, happy happy birthday. birthday, brother. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, brother. I just turned 33 yesterday. Oh, yeah. I saw that online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you, dude. Didn't get the gift I wanted. That's a sick number, huh? (laughs) Dude, I know. It's a a great number. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen that jersey walk past me a few times this weekend. Yeah. (laughs) Constantly turn around like, all right, hey, Marcelo's out. Marcelo's out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Damn it. (laughs) Uh, hey, I gotta ask you, why'd you overshoot my boy Chris like that? <laughs> see, see, we all right, we gotta clear the air now. Yeah, we gotta I clear shot it. seven balls and I didn't miss. I'm sorry that I have good accuracy. Yeah, he's accurate. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I bumped him and he was ask your boy while he's diving while he's the last guy alive, you dummy. Get up <laughs> off the ground. Put your gun it puts point your barrel down the field, bro. Okay. All right. Actually, you make two very good points. If you shoot seven, you don't miss. Okay. And yeah, he shouldn't be diving if you're the last one, especially to the other and team. And he acts like I was the only guy alive. He had a four okay. on one. All like, right. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Come on, bro. That's fair. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. he's, he, he ran past me and started barking too. And he thinks that I'm going to be the guy to bolt. I said, I'm sorry. How's your head feel, buddy? Still ringing? He said, I feel great. Like, yeah. Ding dong. Dude, your eyes are flicker. <laughs> He was he was definitely hot about it, but hey, he played lights out that oh, match. Yeah. He played lights yeah, out. He did. Yeah, he a, played Chris he played lights out that event, dude. He yeah. had he had yeah. good points. I, yeah. I'll give credit where credit's due, totally. but don't yeah. act like I'm gonna be the guy that pulls, <laughs> dude. You ain't getting in my head. I'm bulletproof. I love it. I love it. I love it. I've, I fucking That's the love mentality you, you gotta have. I love you don't win one on ones like that without that kind of mentality. Period. No, yeah. dog. Period. I, we play. We play a sport where a gun is in your hand and you shoot people, dog. I'm not yeah. gonna be mm-hmm. soft. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Come on right. now. 100%. Come on 100%. now. You, you have yeah. to have a certain level of of uh, you know what everyone says is fuck you. So for lack of a better term, you have to have a certain level of fuck you in you 
to be really good Absolutely. at this game. Probably in, in most sports, right? You, but this sport, yeah. especially because it doesn't feel good to get shot by a paintball. That's for sure. No, especially you know? in the back of the head when you're laying down looking the hey, other all way. All right, okay, enough, dude. Enough, Jacob. <laughs> enough, bro. All right. I, I think he made you some moves up, that we bro. still I'm won the match. All right. Yeah. I brought yeah, it up. you did. You got you got a few good calls in your way. <laughs> you, Tyler's known about that. <laughs> you, you you won the tournament. It's all right. You won the tournament. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. um, you know, you you have to have that in you. You just have to. You have to be able to like tap into something on the paintball field that is a different kind of beast, different kind of animal. And uh, if you don't, yeah. you you play soft, you lose gunfights, you don't make moves. Um, mm -hmm. You have to have a certain level of, of, of intensity and belief in yourself. Uh, I, I do believe it's for most sports, right? But paintball seems like a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. um, and it just is what it is. Like, you know, you, you got to curate that animal for you. So whatever it is, whatever that alter ego is, when you step onto that field, you, you have to figure out what that is and, and fucking really buy into it. Flip the switch. Hey, we all know you got to have that dog. In you. you have to yeah. turn it off, dude. Gotta have that dog. Yeah. Dude, it's funny you say that because before you even came on the show, I said that boy's a dog, <laughs> and now he's saying, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." Jacob's been a dog since he came came into the league, dude. Since yeah. day one, straight up, that was like always your I thing. I appreciate yeah, it. 100%. I appreciate it. And yeah. I do want to uh, talk to you about you know the mindset and the work ethic of the organization as a whole. And big ups to Joey Bloop. Big ups to ownership, everybody that that makes the team come together, right? Um, working extremely yeah. hard. So what is that work ethic like for you guys? Is every single player on the squad exercising, showing up to the paintball field, watching video, doing all of the little things, or or just a few of you, or what's it like in the camp? I mean, we're we're a team full of blue worker, you know, mm -hmm. blue collar workers, dude. So a lot of us, we don't I mean a lot of them. I, I don't I'm not I don't put myself in that category. I play a lot of paintball, mm -hmm. work out all the damn time. I put the work in for sure. Um, but a lot of them they're 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 daddies, you know. Thank yeah, thankfully yeah. we pulled it out on, on Father's Day because that's a that's a hell of a gift to them all. Wow. But yeah. uh a lot of those guys, man, they're all dads and and they work full time and they, they shit, man, they they don't have enough time to go and work out all the time, but mm -hmm. Uh, like two of my teammates, man, if they don't wake up at five in the morning and go work out, they're not working out that day. Cause they don't, they just don't have enough time in the day, mm. but, uh, that they all put the work in, you know, we all, we all do our part. Um, we're constantly talking to each other, trying to, you know, come up with strategies and, and calls and, and, you know, mm. Especially when the layout comes out, it sucks that it only comes out one weekend in advance now where we don't really, Jacob, you know, hold up. Right before you came on, we got news from Tom Cole this weekend that next year they're going back to two weekend layouts, two layout that, weekends. I feel like that's a, I feel like that's good because totally. it's good for field owners. It's, yeah. it, it's good for teams that, that, you know, have the budget to play that much. It's good for everybody. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel, you know, uh, we, we still practice two weeks out. We don't, we don't take that one weekend out. We, we still practice that yeah. weekend before we'll just throw a random layout up and we'll go and play together and, um, practice. But that's pretty much as much as damage plays together as those two weekends before each tournament. I mean, a lot of them, you know, now that I moved up to Virginia, I don't get to play with them every weekend. But when I lived down in Florida, I was playing every single weekend with, uh, let's say like Chris Horn, uh, Keith Brown, Brian Smith, Jason, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of those dudes, they do go out and play, every weekend but mm -hmm. you know a lot of them you know work full time and have family so like let's say fourth of july weekend i bet you a lot of them are going to take off and go spend time with their families you know yeah and as i mean without a doubt you're one of the top players in the world you know one of the best players in the league um what does your personal regiment look like like i'm sure you're playing paintball and like you said you know you're doing the extra work Absolutely. uh working out and, and I'm sure you're watching paintball videos and, and fill in your mind with as much paintball as you possibly can. I date a girl that plays paintball, man. My life is <laughs> straight up paintball. There My life is paintball. I watch paintball every, like, I was not say every day, you know, but I watch yeah. paintball a lot. I, uh, I, well, if you count you know, the I, phone, I have if you a, count the phone. You watch it every day. You know, you're looking at it all yeah. the time. <laughs> 
Yeah, first actually, yeah. Let's, I watch paintball every single day because I'm scrolling through Instagram, seeing paintball every single day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm snap shooting in the backyard constantly. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I work out every damn day. Mm-hmm. Uh, cardio, you know, sprints, suicides. I, I do them all, dude. There we go. Uh, just constantly trying to get better. You know. Yeah, that's right, man. It's all about the progression. That's right. Love that. Jacob, uh, this was obviously the first win with Rainey on the team now. Um, and first win for damage in a while. You guys won the one last year, but that was like a practice event, you know, blind layout, that that kind of thing. This is the first real, real win. <laughs> how did <laughs> how did the team feel? I'm just playing, dude. It's, it's been an inside joke here on PTG with those damn practice events, only because our team sucks so bad at them. Um, right, but, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, our practice event had 16 of 20 pro, pro teams, yeah. you know, yeah, totally. damn practice event. So a damn practice <laughs> event. Um, how, how was the feeling amongst the team? You know, obviously like you guys are one of the teams that, uh, has made a lot of big moves, have, you know, superstars and a lot of veterans and a cohesive unit, amazing program. It's been around a long time. What was Sunday night? Like what was last night, you know, uh, like with the celebration, with the feeling you guys comfortable, uh, Happy, hungry. What what was that like? It was pretty awesome. Uh, we all went back to the hotel, showered. Uh, a bunch of du- a couple of dudes. Let's say like four dudes had flights, so they basically went straight to the airport and uh, they they got dinner together, and I'm sure had a few beers, yada yada. Mm-hmm. Flew back home. Uh, I felt like I got beat by a damn baseball bat, so I, <laughs> I got a hotel room. Uh, definitely drank a few beers with the dudes. We went and got some hibachi. Uh, nice. You know, there we go. Sh- shot the shit, you know, hung out. Yeah. And uh, they, they, uh, <laughs> we had some sake bombs. Sake. Nice. It was a good go. time. Sake. It was a good time. But, uh, <laughs> awesome, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was, uh, it was, it was fun to just, you know, soak in the, in the victory and then, you know, right back to real life. We're all back back home now and i'm sure most of us went to work you know mm-hmm. it's just yep. yeah, back, back to real back, life back to reality back to the Is, real isn't, life. It, isn't it so weird i feel like it's gotten uh more and more like this as i've gotten a little bit older and we we go to these events man when we come back it's it's kind of depressing at times you know it's deflating yeah i, I have so much fun competing at these yeah. events the actual like competition part of it you know, being yep. with your team and being totally dialed in and focused 100% on everything that it's going to take to win that weekend. Like that process yep. is so addicting and so fulfilling. Um, when we get home from it, I'm like, well, what now? You know, and, and of course we have a yeah. million other things going on and I'm happy pursuing other things. But, you know, the competition part of it is just so magical, man. It's so much fun. Um, it's like a, it's like you get to check out from reality, right? Yeah, you're totally. there for, for one reason and one reason only. You yeah. turn the work calls off and, and then, and then you just play paintball, man. You focus on what, what you need to do to be everybody or the best talent in the, yeah. in the world. You, you know, you could argue it's like meditation. Yeah. Cause exactly mm-hmm. that. Oh, absolutely. Tune, yeah. You tune everything else out you, and you have a, an extreme focus and you're kind of in flow state the whole time you're at events in a, in a way, you know? And if you're not, you're not doing good, man. Yeah, facts. That's right. Facts. Jacob, do you mind sharing a little bit of insight with all the divisional players that are listening on on um, what kind of things damage does or you think teams should do in their practices to be prepared for um, those high pressure situations and and winning tournaments and understanding what to do on Sunday? Uh, I, th- I think it just comes from feedback. I mean, if you're playing the uh, if you're playing the layout you know, constantly learning what zones are important and uh, what people you can really shoot off of the break, what bunkers you can make safely. If you figure out what people you can shoot off the break and what bunkers you can make safely, you have a, a perfect base play, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then if you have feedback from, you know, if you practice a team that you really trust or, or you know the people on there, and you get good feedback from them like, hey, you bounced me here. We all know practice paint isn't as good as tournament paint. Totally. Mm-hmm. So if you get the, that feed, that good feedback, like, hey, bounce me in this gap or whatever, whatever, then you know yeah. 
going to the tournament that what is realistic and what is not. And so then, important. Obviously, so we important. all know the basics are, are important, right? Snap shooting, running and shooting. Uh, communication. Communication is probably the biggest thing in, in our division, for sure. But in any division, if you have teammates that give you good communication or, or good intel, then you know what to do in that situation. So yeah, if, if right. you, you know, you're crawling down the snake and the guy behind you says, hey, there's no snake, especially in a snake like this, you can just go all the way and shoot people in the back. Yeah. And nothing's easier than shooting people on the side <laughs> that aren't looking at you. That's right. It is the easiest. You're right. Dude, necks, backs, and packs. That's that's what you want. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, so I, I believe, you know, if you're constantly working on your game as a divisional player, that's that's what you really need to focus on is basics and communication. Gun skills, you know, snap shooting and running and shooting, and then communication. Yeah, what does it take to win, man? You know, there's divisional teams and pro teams that are looking for a W, and you have to have that dog in you. You know what I mean? That grit. What yeah. does it take to win? You got you got to get your mind to be bulletproof and you got to buy into your team. You can't let people get into your, into your head and you have to really buy into who your teammates are. Like, do you think that this teammate isn't good enough or that teammate's not good enough? Then you're not going to win. Yeah. You have to really be like, hey, I believe in this guy and you know, yeah. I believe that he's going to take me to the podium. That's, that's it. That's powerful. That's so good. Jacob, we have a few Discord questions that we're going to ask you, and then we'll let you go. Thank you again for your time, yeah, brother. Dude. I know you had a long drive back tonight. I'm sure you're exhausted uh, and, and, and just want to relax. But uh, one question from the Discord is from Osborne for this. He goes, Jacob, my son, who's 13, recently had his first one-on-one. -on -one. What tips would you have for younger players that are new to one-on-ones? Uh, just keep track of the player you're playing against. So constantly you know head checking him watching all right say if he's in a in a aztec and there's a dorito next to him watch that gap between that dorito and that aztec don't you don't have to necessarily look directly at the guy yeah but watch that gap and you'll see yeah. a flash go through that gap that means he moved mm -hmm. so then you just shift over and then you start that next gunfight. um but just don't uh don't hide behind your bunker and give him the whole field Huge then, major you know, advice. awareness. Don't yeah, lose your opponent. Yeah, exactly. Don't lose your opponent. Yeah. Awesome. Dang it. Yeah, that's crucial. Yeah, and shuffling those feet. You know, you got to be be on your toes, watching those gaps, and making good shots. We got high voltage. And shout out to the Discord. Let's go, baby. You can try seven days free right now if you go to the website, get in the Discord chat, and ask questions to our guests. We got high voltage. Jacob, congrats on the win. Wondering your thoughts on how the NXL does one-on-ones. Do you like it being a single point? Or would you like to see a more of like a hockey or a soccer format with maybe three rounds or something like that? Uh, I think with the way we do it, I mean, since it's already in the end of the match, um, end of the day, you know, one and done is, is crucial because it's kind of, you know, closes the match out i mean i wouldn't mind the two best two out of three but i think it would just draw it out a little bit longer dude i so uh, think people it should are already be... I, think, I think it so should be best two out of three it's a team sport we play so like we go to one-on-ones it should be like let's see who you know the best i even think best three out of five you know like that'd be sick right. you know like but damn. but then let's say they go out there with the mindset of like we were talking about with tom and, and me and they're trying to draw out that that two minutes then yeah. what if they're trying to draw out the whole roster and you get to the end of your roster what do you do then then you go back to the top okay then we're turning a and baseball then match into a baseball game and, at well, the I was, end of a i was just gonna match. say it's like cricket it's gonna last seven days <laughs> exactly exactly that's yeah. why i say yeah. a one and done is, is crucial because yeah. it could i mean you know not not to boost my own, you know, ego or, or, or toot my own horn, but, you know, sometimes you don't get it done in, in, in that, you know, first or second one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, so if you just yeah. keep on going and you keep on going, then, you know, that game just draw is drawn out. And, maybe you know, just maybe for, fans will get bored. 
Yeah, <laughs> maybe just for for the finals, it's like best of three or best of five, and everything else is one right. and done. That would be yeah. kind of sick. I, yeah, I would be fine with anything. I love paintball in, in itself, so if, yeah. if there was yeah. more one-on-ones, then, then so be it. But <laughs> Hey, yeah. either way, it's man, it's entertaining, bro. It was, and I was commentating that game, and uh, it was extremely entertaining, man. It was one of the best games we've seen. I, I definitely like the the one on ones at the end. I, I, at first, you know, in, in Texas, I was heading to go hit the button, and the refs were telling me like, "Hey, you don't have to hit the buzzer." I was like, "Oh, so I only have to shoot the guy." Yeah. In two minutes, that's yeah. sick. That's easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude. We were actually making jokes uh, because you shot him and then you ran off the field and we were like, oh no, you know, you didn't hit the buzzer, but that's Went out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> that would have sucked. That would have sucked. Can you imagine? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That would have been <laughs> terrible. Bro. Thankfully, All right. it's not Benny, like that. Benny B says, Jacob, congrats on the second huge one-on-one win with damage now only missing Sunday once over this last year. What are a few items you think are contributing to this to the success you guys are seeing? Uh, I believe that it's our communication. That's really what we're we're focusing on, you know, in practices and uh, really buying into each other and trusting in our, any in each other to to get a job done or whatnot. Sometimes we all are egotistical and we uh, overextend into a into a gunfight and lose that gunfight, um, but we're really starting to buy into each other and, and believing in each other to, to pick up jobs when we need help. Right. So yep. mm-hmm. I believe that that's what it is helping us in, in our success is, is communication to each other. That's one of the best statements that I've heard in quite some time, because the communication and the connectivity, not only are you not going to chance that gunfight and possibly lose that player, but you're building the picture. You're building the picture of the game together. That's right. So you're you're double ending the progression of you winning. You're staying alive and you're helping build that connection. And it's super important, more so than you know, say you win 50-50 of the gunfights. Um, but then if you just save your own life, that other 50% of the time you're alive and you're connecting and it's building that that picture of the game. Yep. Super Completely agree. Yeah. All right. We got, let's see, we got a ton of questions in here for you. The people are going crazy on this one. Um, we got Xbox name one, two, three, four discord. These names are insane. Jacob, what do you think <laughs> makes you so dangerous as a player and congratulations on answering the call? Not once, but twice. Um, Shit, man, I, I hate to toot my own horn. I think I, I would have to say, I guess I'm confident in my own ability. You know, of course, uh, I, I believe in myself. When I go out there, I'm, I, there's no doubt in my head that you know I'm letting seep in. Because once you let doubt seep in your head, you're going down a downward spiral. <clears throat> so I'm just constantly trying to envision me winning. Mm-hmm. Self talk. Yeah, real real quick. That's an important one. And sorry, dude, that I uh, in- interjected like that there. But that's okay. such an important one, man. And I got to ask you, do you have that type of confidence with everything you do? I try to. Absolutely. I mean, in, in life, you know, if if you're confident in what you're doing, you believe in yourself, then you'll just always go for what you want. Do you- and I, I believe that we live like a short life to where if I'm not going for what I want, I, I always watch these motivational quotes and the one that really stuck with me in the past year is like, you know, if you, if you get that bill from uh, not doing what you wanted, wait till you get the bill from regret or something like that. I've seen that one. Uh, Or sorry, if you get the bill from failure, wait till you get the bill from regret, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Wait till you see the cost Uh, of of regret. Yeah. Something like that. So, so I'm like, man, I, I, whatever I feel like I need or want to do, I'm doing it. You know? Yeah. I I just got to do it. But do you do you have more confidence in the things that you prepare for? Absolutely, bro. If you if you fail to yeah. prepare, you prepare to fail, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's that's so. my point because I I was asked you know similar thing of like, you know, it looks like you're always confident in this situation. How how is that so? I'm like, dude, I'm not naturally a confident person. It might appear that way because we have a show, we talk on the air. 
I practice language. I read and try to figure out how I'm going to structure sentences uh, on the field. My confidence comes from doing a certain shot 200 times, doing another shot right. 200 times. That's where my confidence comes from. It, it's not natural. It's not for me personally. I don't know if it's for everybody, but for me personally, all of my right. confidence comes from hard work. And once you put the work in, then it's like, well, I've earned it. So of course I deserve it. You know, so yep. to me, it's like a uh, uh, something that is it achievable for everybody. You know, I do know so many people that are like, yeah, I, I really lack self-confidence. I, I struggle to believe in myself. OK, my first question is, are you putting in the work necessary to believe in yourself? Right. That's a good question. Like, that's a good question, because if you're yep. not, then it makes sense that you would question yourself. It makes sense that you would have doubt. But if you've put Absolutely. in the, if you've put in the work to believe in yourself then confidence is actually the easiest part of it. The work's the hard yep. part. The confidence is the easy part. Like Kobe said, the work is the journey, man. Yeah, sure is. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a big thing in, in competition sports. Is If you're not putting that work in practice, how, how are you supposed to believe in yourself when it comes time to that, that pressure-packed moment? Totally. You know? Yeah. Hey, you got to clock in. All right, brother. Right. I, I know you got to go here soon. I have one more question from the Discord. Um, Tyler Alrighty. might have one. I'm not sure. But here's my last question from Mark Paris. He wants to know, Jacob, will you be competing in the Hormesis one-on-one -on -one event for pros? And who do you think would be your biggest competition in the event? Also, where is, where is that happening? Also, is Joey the best coach in paintball? Um, and where is it happening? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's all over the country. He, they're going on like a full okay. fucking tour right now. I don't know if you saw the <laughs> bus they have. They're going to like 15 different parks. Um, Dude, I had no idea this was happening. But what? that is sick. What? No, no, no Dude, the, idea. Win the winner can win like 10 grand. You got to go because it's going to be dope. Uh, what? Th the field is really <laughs> sick. Yeah, you didn't know about this? Oh. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah, Here, I thought it was for uh, divisional divisional players only. Is what uh, uh, somebody I I talked to. There's said. two I different things. I was talking to. Yeah, about it. there's the joust, which is for divisional players and pros, and, and then, then the there's duel. the duel, which is the ten thousand dollar grand prize. The dates okay. go from June twenty fourth until August twelfth and thirteenth. It's every single weekend, and they're at Ohio Level Up, Boston Paintball in Massachusetts, July first and second. Uh, quick shot paintball, July 8th and 9th. That might be the closest one to you. Um, July 15th and 16th is down in Florida, at Austin Tyndale Park. July 22nd and 23rd is Alabama. July 29th and 30th is Texas at PB Fit. Um, August 4th and 5th is in Arizona Battle Zone. Yeah. August 12th and 13th is in California SC Village. Man, that's sick. So if I, you, I would, I would love to. Um, you only have to we'll go to one of them. And if you go to one, okay. you qualify for like the final, which you could win ten grand at. I think. Yep. Yeah, we might have to do this. Then. That's some hey. cash money, dog. Let's go. <laughs> That's some cash That's a money. lot of money, dog. Yeah. Yeah, and that that is the um, you know, that's the dream or the mission that all he has is he wants to, you know, hopefully grow this thing and and change people's lives essentially, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because when you do that, you're you're giving someone a major boost in their life and. It has the potential to grow into something that can be extremely life changing for someone as it develops into the years. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be wild, man. Awesome. Yeah. They got a whole tour bus. It's lit, bro. This thing looks crazy. It's got the whole wrap <laughs> around the bus. They got a little trailer they're towing. They got, they're on a mission of mercy. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. It's, it's, Oliver and and Frazier that's doing this. Who's yeah. all doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Hormesis. Yeah, exactly. Oliver okay, Frazier, yeah. Kevo, uh, Kevin is the, the guy that's been you know running Hormesis. He he's like the yep, kind of the face yep, of it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, so yep. they're you know Kevo and Oliver are literally touring around the country in this bus right now. They're gonna be at every single one of those events. Oliver is gonna be playing in all of them. Um, and it's a badass thing, dude. Oliver's Oliver's vision for this is really cool. So. Jacob, have you even seen like the field? Do you, do you are you familiar with any of this? No, dude, okay. the field no. is probably a quarter the size of a NXL pro field. Mm -hmm. I so, mean, that's sick for a so, one on one. It's action packed, then, yeah. bro. Okay, yeah. So look, there's there's uh four rows of bunkers, right? 
And yeah. every tournament, the bunkers are in the same exact spot, but you could put a different bunker in that spot, right? So like maybe in this, in section 1A, it's a Dorito. And at the next event, it's a temple. All the bunkers gotcha. are small. So none of the big bricks, none of the BS, right? It's all the gunfighting bunkers. And gotcha. start station to start station, you can see your opponent. There's no bunker. So you have to choose. There's a box. It's not quite like a start station that we're used to. There's a, there's a, a box that you stand in. And you have to choose to go to one side or the other. And, dude, you could ace someone almost every time. You could just pull up and shoot someone if you guess right. And they go to the opposite corner. If your first shot is on, you could ace them. So it's like tennis, and it's first to ten. Got to win by two. It's really badass, dude. It's going to be super it's athletic. It's a race that, that first to ten? First to ten, And yes. you got to win by two. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's sick. It's dope, dude. It's dope. So his vision – and then, you know, there's like – really nice uh banners around the whole thing super professional nice tents they have all this in the bus so they're going to set it up at every spot and it's going to look amazing yeah no i didn't pay any attention to this yeah okay dude, so we're gonna get you in there you're yeah, probably not the sure. only one and if you want to go back to the most recent episode we did with oliver you have to listen to this as well like go tap in on the oliver episode we did it was not too long ago and he breaks down all the details on that episode as well. Can't remember which episode it okay. is, but it was pretty recently. The last one we just did with Ollie. Yeah. Playing. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, man. You, brother. Well, hey, dude, we appreciate you. We appreciate your time. And congratulations to you and the squad once again on the big win out there at NXL Philly. And uh, we can't wait to see you. It's going to be a little bit of a break, you know, in between the next event here. But I know you'll be working hard. And we can't wait to see you out there playing more paintball, dude. Sure. Thank you. Thank Dude, you, Jacob. Course. Appreciate you, Thank brother. You. Yep. Congrats. Thanks, guys. You're the man. Keep crushing. Hell yeah. Yep. Have a good night. Later, dude. You too, bro. Later. Peace. All right. Animal. What an animal. Dog. Animal. He's definitely going to have a fun time playing that one on one tournament. Yeah. Shit. If he plays it, fuck, he's got a good chance. Good yeah. He's chance. not too far away from Quick Shot. And we're actually, you and I are going to be hopefully out at Quick Shot um, this season as well. Yes, With, we will uh, for sure. I, I did talk to Quinn again. Um, so we will be out there. I think it's the first weekend in August, right? I think that's yeah, it. I believe that you are correct. It's going to be coming up here shortly. And yep, that would be the weekend of the 5th in August. If you're in the New Jersey area, Let's we're going to be coming out to Quick Shot Paintball for a PTG Pro School. Let's go. Yes. Awesome, brother. Ty, what an epic show, dude. Uh, you know it. Jacob's the man. We got all the juice. I love you, dude. Um, love you too, I'm bro. I'm off to celebrate some 33, uh, you know, my 33rd birthday and have a full week of uh, some fun festivities. Dude, happy birthday, you old fart. You, and we're coming up <laughs> on episode number 200. Let's it's go. It's going to be an absolute fiesta. So you're not yes. going to miss that one. Can't it's coming wait. up in two episodes here. Hell yeah. That's all right, Papa. Go. All right, dude. Have a good night. You too. Peace. Peace. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, please, if you guys could like, share, subscribe, comment, all the stuff really helps support the show, helps get us seen by more people and people that don't play paintball. If we can beat the algorithm on YouTube, paintball can grow. Paintball will be shown to people that don't know paintball. And that is a good thing for everybody because I promise you, once people try paintball, they're going to be hooked. They're going to love it just like you and I, me and Ty. Um, also, another amazing way to support the show is any of our sponsors please purchase their product use code play the game um, you could go to our website ptgpaintball.com click the patreon link above become a member and get access to our discord our discord is amazing tyler and i are very active in there we've got an amazing community that offers all sorts of fantastic exclusive perks you don't want to miss it ptgpaintball.com all right everybody as always we will see you very very soon <laughs>